You could say the face of Seattle is changing, but it's really four faces, at least, changing on the Seattle City Council this fall. Council member Lisa Herbold is one of only three incumbents running for one of the council's seven contested seats. In District 1, she's up against public defense attorney Phil Tavel. I want to work together with people to give them faith that their council member is working for them. People do want change in this city. Council President Bruce Harrell is not running again for his District 2 seat. Opening the door for community organizer Tammy Morales and SPD crime prevention coordinator Mark Solomon. I'm the candidate in this race who is ready to hit the ground running. I am focused on getting results for people. In D3, it's Socialist Alternative Council member Shama Sawant up against challenger Egan Orion in a race where the candidates have raised nearly $700,000 between them and PACs have put in more than 300,000 more to sway the vote. This election is about winning a progressive city hall. I can work across organizations and communities to get big stuff done. In District 4, interim council member Abel Pacheco is not running for the position he took over from Rob Johnson. So it's former city council aide Alex Peterson versus Democratic Socialist Sean Scott. For this particular position, the experience is what really matters. Voters should vote for me because I'm actually one of them. D5 incumbent Deborah Juarez wants a second term. She's facing attorney Ann Davison Sattler. I've delivered everything that I said I would. I'm running because I really want some change. In District 6, with Mike O'Brien stepping aside, it's current council aide Dan Strauss pitted against former council member Heidi Wills. I am the candidate for Seattle's future. People want problem solvers. They want to see results. And finally, with D7 council member Sally Bagshaw not running again, it's assistant city attorney Andrew Lewis taking on former Seattle police chief Jim Pugel. I think that we need a new direction. and I have maturity and experience. The battle between older and younger candidates is a stark division with the King County Council's District 2 seat. 74-year-old Larry Gossett is seeking an eighth term up against 32-year-old challenger Gurmai Zahalai, who won a surprising 56% of the vote in the August primary. Nobody expected that, including myself. <laughs> Zahilai says he respects and admires Gossett, but wants to give District 2 a new voice. I'm running because I believe the direction that our region has been going for a long time is making life very hard for a lot of people. Gossett says the primary results surprised him too, but he says his experience makes him the best choice in what he's calling his final run for office. It will be the last, but there's several projects that I definitely wanted to finish. And without bragging or anything, I'm by far the best person to lead the effort. And leading the effort for $30 car tabs? They're just pigs at the trough. Well, of course, it's Tim Iman, whose initiative 976 would slash car tab taxes to $30 per year for any vehicle, getting rid of what he calls an unfair state vehicle valuation system. They're leaving the voters no choice. If you don't like this dishonest vehicle valuation schedule, 976 is the only way to get rid of it. Kelsey Mesher of the Transportation Choices Coalition, along with the Seattle City Council, opposes the measure, which TCC says would gut more than $24 billion from transportation projects statewide. There's a big, broad coalition of people who think this is a horrible idea, and we, we really hope everyone gets on board. One of Iman's early initiatives, I-200, which voters passed in 1998 as a ban on affirmative action, is back before voters in another form. As a legislator, you cannot reverse people's will. State lawmakers passed I-1000 this past session, bringing back an affirmative action program to help women, people of color, and veterans with job opportunities and college admissions. Opponents are pushing back, and you'll see this as Referendum 88 on your ballot to say yes or no to I-1000. The no side says voters should have the final say when it comes to what they call preferential treatment. So basically the government should be treating people the same regardless of your race and color. We have an opportunity in Washington state to right Tim Iman's wrong. Labor leaders say I-1000 does not establish any quotas for hiring or school admission.
and would allow Washington to join 42 other states that have affirmative action policies. This initiative is consistent with who we are as a state and the values that we hold as Washingtonians, and it is time to restore equity and fairness and opportunity. From a serious discussion of racial equity to a major overhaul of the Seattle City Council, it's a crowded ballot this fall with some guaranteed changes in political leadership just ahead.